Good evening, everybody. I'm Lou Dobbs. Two days ago, President Obama urged the American people to trust him to make a good nuclear deal with Iran. But today we learn many of our allies in the Middle East side with Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu's view of Iran, not the president's. And Mr. Obama has his Secretary of State out selling hard in the region. The Secretary of State spent the day in Saudi Arabia. They're trying to convince the foreign ministers of Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, the United Arab Emirates, that they can trust Mr. Obama and the nuclear weapons deal that's near final agreement with Iran. Kerry assured the Arabs the president isn't planning a so-called grand bargain with Iran. All the countries represented at the meeting with Kerry are Sunni, all of them, of course, keenly concerned about Shia Iran producing a nuclear bomb. Tonight, we take up some of the most troubling elements of that emerging deal. House Intelligence Committee member Congressman Lynn Westmoreland is here. And the Islamic State engaging in a new act of defiance, setting fire to oil wells northeast of the city of Tikrit, trying to slow the joint Iraqi and Iranian offensive against them. This on the same day that Libya accuses the radical Islamist terrorists of attacking, looting, sabotaging, and destroying 11 of their oil fields. Former NATO Supreme Allied Commander Admiral James Stavridis joins us. We'll be taking, uh, taking up the Islamic uh, state threat, and we'll have the latest for you on Ukraine. And the Clinton email scandal. The White House claims they did not know she was using only her personal email account during her entire tenure as Secretary of State. And did the administration really learn about the Clinton scandal through news reports again? Just like the VA scandal? Just like the IRS targeting scandal? Just like Operation Fast and Furious? Is that what's called a pattern of behavior? Bad behavior? We'll examine that here tonight. We begin in Riyadh, where Secretary Kerry tried to convince anxious Arab Gulf leaders that a deal with Iran is in their self-interest. Kerry said, quote, it will alleviate tension and remove barriers to regional security. It will reduce the pressure for a regional nuclear arms race. Joining us tonight, Congressman Lynn Westmoreland, member of the House Intelligence Committee, the Benghazi Select Committee, and the Financial Services Committee. Congressman, good to have you here. The, Thanks for having me, Lou. Th this deal, I, while in Saudi Arabia, Secretary Kerry is selling Sunni Arabs that Shia domination will continue and there is nothing for them to fear at the prospect of, of Iran having a nuclear bomb in a decade. You know, Secretary Kerry over there uh, telling the uh, Saudi foreign minister, uh, Al Shamani, uh, that is almost like Jack Kevorkian coming into your hospital room telling you you're going to be, you know, he's going to be okay. Uh, I mean, they don't believe him. And uh, why should they? And like you said, I mean, that's a Sunni nation. And with the Shias uh, from Iran, uh, in fact, the foreign minister said, he said, this is what we were afraid of. And all we can tell them is trust me. And so I, I think uh, what a speech that Prime Minister Netanyahu gave. I mean, 37 standing ovations, the last one for three and a half minutes. I think um, um, the American people stand with Israel and we do not need a bad deal. And as the prime minister said, you know, we used to say the enemy of your enemy is your friend. In this case, the enemy of your enemy is our enemy. And uh, amongst uh, those uh, enemies, of course, preeminently is Iran itself, uh, leading sure. the offensive in, uh, into Crete against the Islamic State, uh, dominating two-thirds of the force, Shia militia, uh, or Quds force. Uh, and the United States yep. uh, continues to lead from behind to the point that it's, it is effectively invisible right now uh, in, uh, in its presence in the Middle East. Well, Lou, I think it's an indication that the Baghdad government uh, does not have any confidence in us. I mean, we sent uh, some advisors over there. We sent some people to train their forces. The Azranians, as you said, sent the Quds over there 
with this general uh, that uh, has been with the uh, uh, Revolutionary Front. And, I mean, uh, there's 30,000 strong going into Kirk. So they, they put their money and their people where their mouth is, where I, I just think that the Baghdad government just gave up on the fact that we were never going to put any boots on the ground over there to help. Turning to the select committee the, uh, on Benghazi, uh, Secretary of State Clinton, uh, by day, it, by day, by day, it gets worse and worse uh, uh -huh. on this email scandal. What do you make of it, and what can uh, your committee do uh, to secure those emails for the purpose of the Benghazi investigation? Well, you know, Lou, the thing about it is that uh, she tweeted that she wanted the State Department to release all of her emails. Mm -hmm. Well, we want to know where all of her emails are at. And, uh, and you know, she had her own server. Uh, she had the ClintonEmail.com address. And we don't know. And so we are, I'm sure, Chairman Gow made it quite clear to the members of the, the committee and the staff that we're going to find out uh, where these emails are at and how far uh, they go back. The other thing is, is that, you know, this uh, about a year ago, I guess, or maybe two, she put it on a backup server at Google after, you know, it had been reported that the Chinese had broken into the, the Google server. So uh, we don't know how many emails there were. Uh, they're going to give us a bunch of them, but that doesn't mean it's all of them. Very quickly, Congressman. Uh, Congressman Gowdy had said that uh, she would be brought to testify before the committee. Uh, he has also promised subpoenas. Uh, will she, in fact, be called to testify? Um, that's up to Chairman Gowdy, but I would say it's a very good chance. And what what the chairman is trying to do is just to have her in one time and get all the information as any good attorney would do, any pro, you know, would want to do is to have all the information before you bring the witness in. And that's what Chairman Gowdy wanted to do so she wouldn't have to make two trips. But I think they're going to drag their feet long enough that uh, she'll announce uh, for the presidency. And, uh, and then it'll become, oh, this is just a political thing. But she owes more now to the American people than she just about Benghazi. This is about her actions for four years, having two personal email accounts and not uh, putting it on the state as required by law. And all of this coming to light two and a half years after that uh, terrorist attack against our consulate. Congressman, it's great to have you with us. We appreciate your time. Congressman Lynn Westmore. Thank you. Thank you.